Hey guys, it's May May, and it's time for another gift idea for Christmas. And this little box is not 100% decorated. However, this is an idea I wanted to get to you so that if you wanted to make it for a Christmas present, you would have some time to do it. And we're getting really close. So I wanted to go ahead and bring you this idea because a lot of you guys are going to be able to decorate this with no issue. I just wanted to show you how to make it. So this is what I'm calling a waterfall box album, I guess, photo cube. We can call it something like that. So here's how it works. This is just a box, very much like I did the graduation box before. You can check out that video too. I'll link it below. But this lid comes off. This guy opens up. The middle of it, because I know that's going to be the one that you probably wondered the most about first, is this. It's like a photo accordion piece that just pulls out because I wanted you to have a whole bunch of space for photos. Now, you can do anything you want with the middle of this book. This is just what I decided to do. I actually saw an idea on Pinterest like this, and I thought, well, that'd be a quick way to get a whole bunch of photos in. But here's what I've been wanting to do. So I made a waterfall card um, back, I don't even know, several, several, several weeks ago. And it was from and across the miles card that I got. And when I got it, I thought we could use this mechanism a whole bunch of different ways. So check this out. These little pieces are waterfall pieces on the side. And all four of these guys do this. So the reason I'm doing this video today, even though you're going to see, you know, a partially unfinished box, this one and the one I'm going to make, I wanted you to see, and I did not fold this good. I need to get that folded again. I wanted you to see an, a gift idea you could make. Just, you know, I wanted to show you the mechanism. That was the point. If I show you how to make this box, a lot of you guys can run with this and turn it into whatever you want to turn it into. This was my sample. This is the first one I made. So this is like my um, template one. But we're going to make one today out of Christmas paper because I was thinking this would be a cute way, even if you didn't give it as a gift, it'd be a cute way to display Christmas photos from year to year because put a little bow on top and it looks like a little Christmas gift on your table. What a cute way to show pictures, right? That's what I'm going to do with mine. You're going to start with a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Actually, let me tell you this. You're going to start by going to my blog. It is linked below in the description. All you do is open show more and there's my description. You'll see the link. Tamitha is making for you not only the measurements, but she's making you a checklist because there's a lot of pieces to cut. So you're going to have a checklist with the measurements, okay? Good deal. Let's get started. So this 12 by 12 piece of paper, we're going to score it at four inches and we're gonna score it at eight inches. Then I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna score it again at four and at eight. This is going to become our box for our card, or for our photo cube. I'm gonna get that in my head in a minute, our photo cube. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to cut away my score line. A lot of times you guys ask me about this. I'm not just gonna cut the score line. I'm gonna cut it away. So I'm gonna cut right to the inside of the score line closest to the middle square, okay? So just like that. So basically, if you looked at this piece of paper, the score line is left on this piece, and that's what I wanna do. Then on this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. Cut at the score line closest to the middle square. You wanna do this pretty straight because this is the sides of your box that close up in the lid, okay? Don't get rid of these. These are the right size to use on the inside of one of your waterfalls. So don't get rid of these. They have to be trimmed a little bit, but they'll work. And there's four pieces here you're going to have for that. So just sit those aside so you can use them. Then I'm going to trim this one the same thing, cutting away the score line. Sometimes I like to cut in the ditch, basically, like in the mark made by the score line. But on this one, I'm cutting it away. And I'm going to do this all the way around and just leave that the middle sections. So this is what we're looking for, like a cross here. And like I said, these four pieces just need to be cut down a little bit to be the four pieces for the tops of your waterfall. So don't get rid of those. Now we're gonna do something really fast just to get this out of the way. And that is make a reference mark for ourselves. On the ends of each one of these little cross pieces, I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm using my cutting mat. You do this any way you need to do it. And I'm gonna make myself a pencil mark at half an inch. So I'm coming in half an inch and making a pencil mark all the way around. What's gonna happen here is there's one piece that we need to glue into place and this is gonna be our reference for it and we won't have to worry about where it is later. We're just gonna go ahead and make this mark. And you might not can see my pencil mark because I'm trying to do it really, really light, but it's half an inch in from each edge. You'll be glad I showed you this later because you won't have to guess, you'll just know. 
Here we go. Got our half inch marks in. So now I'm going to set this guy aside for a little bit. I don't really need him for a little while. Now I'm going to go to some more of our papers that I've already cut all my papers. So this is what you're going to end up with. Okay. You're going to need four pieces that look like this. Now I went ahead and cut mine apart for this section, but if you want to do all your scoring at one time, leave it, you know, leave it together in one piece. Okay. Do your scoring and then come back and cut it apart. But I want to do it separate just to keep confusion down. And that may have confused you, but if you watch for a second, it'll make sense. Let me get my scoreboard back out. This is the pull strip. This is what's going to be that you pull to do your waterfall. Okay. So I'm going to put this into my scoreboard. This is seven and a quarter by two and a half. And I'm going to score it in the following places. I have my cheat sheet over here. I'm going to score it at one and three fourths, two and one fourth, two and three fourths, three and one fourth. I had to get my little note every time in between. So that's where I'm going to score this. Let's do another one. So we're going to score it at one and three fourths to start, two and one fourth, two and three fourths, three and one fourth. Now all four of these need to be scored at this location. So this one I was telling you, if you if you kept the page together and did your scoring all at one time and then cut them apart, that might be the way you want to do it. But I'm just going to do it this way. While I have my scoreboard out, I'm going to talk to you about these strips. These are the strips that are going to hold the waterfalls onto the flaps. These need to be one inch by 12 inch, and you need to do the same thing. You need to score them all in the same place. So if you want to leave this together before you cut it apart, you can. I just didn't for purposes of the video, but I'm going to put this into my scoreboard. I'm going to score it at four inches and at eight inches. So each one of these need to be scored at the same place. Four and eight. So that's got my waterfall um, strips done and my little piece that's going to be the anchor piece. That's done as well. Now what I want to do is where my score lines are, you can see those are here. On this end, I want to corner round these with my corner chomper. The reason is this is the piece that you will literally pull whenever you're pulling on the waterfall. And I thought it'd be pretty if it wasn't a perfect square. I like to do that. So see, it'll be kind of like a tab in there. So that'll be what we pulled. This will be with the mechanism. So while we've got these here, let's go ahead and do our scoring. I'm going to score and crease these forward and back. Make sure when you're doing this, you try to get a nice, even edge. Okay, so there's the first one. Let's do the next one. And I'm going to do one with you, and then I'm going to do the rest off screen so you don't have to watch all those. But I'm going to go ahead and fold and crease every line. And I'm lining up the edge so that it all is nice and smooth. Just like that. And then I'm going to, now that I've creased it, I'm just going to fold them back the other way just with my hand. I want these to be able to be real loose and kind of just go in any direction. See how that's doing like that? That's what we want. So I want to be real loose about it. So there's that one. I'm going to do the same thing with all of the other ones. So this is all four of those folded and creased going both directions. And then we got these guys. Now we can go back to the piece that we started with, which is our cross section piece. All right, so where we did that pencil line, this is where it's gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna go right on the other side of the pencil line and add some glue. And just in a section that's about an inch wide because that's how big my strip is that's going here. So with this strip, between those score lines that we made, I'm gonna lay it at my half inch guide mark with those score lines hanging off either edge. They may not hang perfectly off either edge, but that really doesn't matter because all you wanted was to kind of give you an eyeball direction of the center. That's why we did that. When you come back here, all you want to do is just fold these guys down so that they overlap each other like this. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get that overlap. And you don't have to have this much overlap, but I found that I liked this much for stability because if this guy's going to be used a lot over the years, you want to make sure this is nice and sturdy. So I'm overlapping them all the way across. 
and then laying this down and gluing it on. So this is gonna be our anchor strip that holds our waterfall into place. You're gonna need these on every flap. And I decided to do it in the same color because it really doesn't bother me. It kind of blends in, especially when I put my decorator paper. But the lid that I created for it goes far enough down to go right to the edge of it so it'll really hide it if you, if you still see it and it kind of bothers you. So let's go around and do another one. So strip again. Here's my half inch mark right on the other side of that mark, about an inch wide. Put yourself some adhesive. Center your score marks on either side. Lining that up. And then wrap it around. Just like this and this and glue that together. You want it a little loose. You don't want it super tight. So give yourself a little bit of room in there. All right, I'm gonna do the other two. So this is my last strip. But now that we've done this, you will know the inside from the outside because the inside is the part where you're not adhering this to the flap, where you're just adhering it to itself. And the outside is the part where you adhered this straight down to the cube itself. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me get this in place and I'll explain that one more time. Okay, so the inside will have the loose edge and the outside it will be attached to. So now you'll know that this is your inside. All right, so now let's do the inside. Let's start our waterfall pieces. Now this is really simple. Once you get the cutting done, the scoring, the bending, this part goes together really quick. So you're gonna take this edge that you corner round and you're gonna slide it underneath the flap you just placed, you just created. So slide that underneath. This piece is gonna get glued to this piece. Now what I did, let me do this really quick on my cutting mat too. What I did was I laid this on my cutting mat and I'm gonna use my mat to help me kind of eyeball center this. So this edge, okay, is gonna line up with the flap edge right here. And I'm gonna eyeball center this onto like here, it's about, it's three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch. That's about what we're looking like. And this is how this will work. So you're gonna want this loose edge attached to this flap at the bottom of it, okay? So I'm just gonna lift that up. I'm gonna apply glue right where that's gonna go onto that little anchor strip we just put down. And I'm gonna sit this into it. So I'm only gluing it to the anchor strip. That's important. It's only getting glued to this strip but that edge gets glued down. Then when we put our little pieces on it, it'll go like this and let our pieces waterfall. Let's do another one. So line it up on my scoreboard, put the loose edge down into the slot, just moved it all around. Line up the edge of the top of your little slider piece, okay? Eyeball it three quarters and three quarters on either side. You can measure if you need to, but y'all know I rarely, rarely do that. The fact that I measured that front piece with that inch was pretty amazing. And then I'm gonna lift this flap and glue this down. Easy construction. All right, do this to the other two, just the same. Okay, so they are all glued down. Now we're gonna start with one and we're gonna put our little pieces on that will become the waterfall pieces. These are all of my pieces cut and ready to go for all four sides. I'm gonna pull out one of each one so we can glue them down. I just went ahead and did all my cutting all at one time. It just made things easier. It's much faster assembly, because like this is the second one I've made and it is much faster. My first one I had to do a lot of um, you know discovery on, so this one's easier. Now, we're gonna start with the piece that will be on the inside, okay? So this little waterfall piece is gonna be underneath, but here's how I've lined it up, okay? I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna line it up at the edge of the flap. If it doesn't go exactly to the edge, mine's hanging over a little bit, just make sure it's not blocking your score mark at the top. So I'm gonna take my glue and under my score mark, I'm gonna add glue. And I can glue this all the way to that square that I have there because it won't interfere. So that whole little square can get it. And I'm just gonna line this up right under that score mark and I've cut it so that I have a 16th, that's actually like an eighth of an inch on either side, okay? So it's kind of sunk in a little bit. You'll see that an eighth of an inch on either side and right under your score mark. Then the next one, I'm gonna put glue into the next score square, the little rectangle section right here. You'll see this as you're going. And this guy is gonna lay even with the bottom one I just put down and I'm gonna let it go right to the top and it should land where it's supposed to. It's even here, it's even on the sides 
and then I just glue it into place. The next one, I'm gonna do the same thing, this section between the score marks, some glue, the next largest size, line it up at the bottom, lay it down and it should go right into place for you. See how that score mark is right at the top? That's perfect. Then the last one gets this last little section. Now don't do like me and get froggy and pull it before it's dry because you'll pull everything loose. So let everything dry and then you can go to tugging on it. So there's one. I'm gonna go ahead and do the others. Let's do one more together just to be safe. So I'm gonna get one of each one of my pieces and I'm gonna start with the smallest piece first and work my way to the biggest. And you don't have to do all one color. You can do what you wanna do. I just kinda like the kinda continuity of the box because I'm gonna add some pattern paper to it and I thought this would be good. So glue in this whole bottom section, just like this. I'm gonna try to line it up at the bottom of the flap. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna clear that score mark. That's the big thing. I don't wanna cover the score line or it won't, it won't waterfall well. You've got a little room because you got this flap added to the bottom here. So then here I'm gonna put in the next scored lines, between the next scores, next biggest size. Let that go down and that's working perfect. It's clear my score line at the top. The next section in the scores, line it at the bottom. Let that land and then the last one. So that's it. I'm gonna do this on the other two and then we will start adding the centerpiece. Okay, so I got everything done and now we'll pull one of the little tabs and I'll show you how it works. See how we get the waterfall? If you struggle getting a good, clean flip like that, open them and crease them down in between each one. And you probably wanna do that anyway, because the looser that little piece is in there, the better they waterfall. Now, this project is quite the stash buster for paper. So if you um, have a lot of stash of paper, this is the great one to get rid of some if you're trying to. What I mean by that is, you can put a mat on this side and this side. Now I'm not gonna do that, especially for this video because I just wanna show you how to build this, but you can put pattern paper on both sides. You'll just wanna measure and get your measurements down for the inside. I did not do that. I'm gonna give you the measurements for the front for these sections, but I didn't do the back side. but you can do that. So all four of your edges are gonna waterfall. Isn't that cool? You'll probably get, you don't have to do just photos. You could do like a story. You could write to someone, a little letter. It could be all kinds of stuff. Now let's do the middle. This couldn't be easier. I actually, like like I said, saw a project where it was a box that had this kind of photo flap pulled out of it. And I thought that was cute, but I thought, how can we add more photos? So that's why we did the waterfall box. So I'm taking three pieces of some coordinating cardstock, okay? I'm going to score it, each piece. And by the way, this is one of those, you can leave the whole piece together and do the scoring and then cut it apart, perfectly fine. So here's where you will score this one. This one gets scored, I gotta look at my cheat sheet for real, because I have forgotten. This one gets scored at three and three fourths, seven and a half, and then 11 and a quarter. So just like that, okay? Do this again. Three and three fourths, seven and a half, 11 and three and one quarter. I almost said three, 11 and one quarter. Don't listen to me, get the blog measurements, that'll help you. All right, so. Three and three fourths, seven and a half, 11 and one quarter. All right, these guys are ready. So now I did this on purpose. Okay, I'm trying to give myself more photo space. You technically could not have this little strip and glue this square to the next square just like this, but you kind of waste a square doing that, or at least in my mind I did. If I was already gonna use a whole 12 by 12 piece of paper, I thought, let's see how we can get all we can from it. So with this little small score line, I'm gonna put some glue on it. And instead of gluing on top of the square and losing a photo spot, I'm going to glue onto the piece that doesn't have the short score right at the score line. You can even cross over it a little bit, it won't hurt. I just wanna get it right to it. So basically I've got, you know, I'm just extending these squares out instead of flapping over it so that I lose it. Also lay it on the table because you can get a good straight that way, okay? So let's go back to the next one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here, I'm gonna glue this one on top of that short flap again and I'm not losing a whole square that way. 
So while that's wet, I'm gonna stand it up and flatten it out good. All right, now we can go back and start to accordion this. Still have a flap to attach it with. And we're not gonna lose any of our photo squares that way. So I did a very sloppy accordion job, but I'm not gonna stress. <laughs> there it is. And then I'm gonna glue this into the box with this flap. So I'm not losing any of those. I'll actually get two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 sections of for photos here, plus the one underneath, which will be 19 photos. Isn't that awesome? And they're good size too. They're three and three-fourths by three and three-fourths um, squares. So that's pretty cool. All right, so glue on this flap. And I'm gonna put it into the book. So now that is in. And you can do anything you want. If you wanted to make like a little pull tab, you could do that. But look how cool, look how many pieces we're gonna get. And that'll just sit here. Now I probably will add a little embellishment, maybe a paper clip with something on it that I clip this together or something. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. You can always, you know, crease, crease, and recrease and still it till it lays down really snug, but this is fine. So let me show you what I'm gonna do with some pattern paper. This is a collection we carry in the store that I have not done anything with this year, and I think it is gorgeous. It's called the Advent Collection from Illustrated Faith. Beautiful paper, and I love that it has a navy background and not black. I thought that was so pretty, and that's why I chose kind of this navy and coral and craft color theme. So I cut a whole bunch of papers already, so I didn't have to do this on camera. And these are the ones I'm gonna use for my decorator paper. So these guys are for the front of the box. These guys are for the front. And we'll get to that in a second. We still have to make our um, lid as well. All right, let's go to these guys. So I did two pieces of paper, so two different patterns. So this one will go here, just like this. And I'm gonna decorate these as if they're facing me. So if you look straight down on it, everything's gonna be facing this way because that's where the pull tab is. So that's why I'm doing this. And I'm gonna go back when I decorate this and do my like stamp that says pull and things like that. So all of that will come, but for now, I'm just gonna get some designer paper in here to show you kind of how it works. So there's one piece. On this one, I'm gonna use the navy. I think this will be pretty. And this one here, you could mix up your paper any way you want. I just thought that these two pieces were so pretty. So here where I did the navy, I'm gonna pull the little flap out. And here, I'm gonna go back to this piece. Now, what these are gonna be is photo mats. So whenever you give this to someone or you make it yourself, you'll put your photo on top of here and anything that shows outside the edge will be the pretty decorator paper. And that makes this easy. So I'm just gonna alternate through this whole piece, these different photo mats, just alternating with, like I said, with just two pieces of paper. So you can see it's the same one, just alternating. So here would be the navy, but you can do this any way you want. Okay, so now I have my little pieces on. And like I said, for this, I'm just gonna put my decorator paper on. I will come back and decorate later. I just wanted you guys to see the assembly. I'm also gonna leave in the link below the video where Amanda covered and decorated the graduation box I did so you can get an idea for how to decorate these. But for now, I just wanna get you seeing this and then you can decorate them a hundred thousand different ways. So this is the assembly of the inside. While I've got it flat like this, I'm gonna go ahead and put my little pieces on here for the box itself. And these just go just like this. So I'm gonna glue these on all four sides. And this is where it's gonna cover up that little anchor flap. So that's not a huge deal, um, you know, that we did that. And that's why I did it in the same color because I thought it would really blend in that way. Now, do something that I rarely do, and that is pay attention to the orientation of the design on your paper. I'm so bad about that, but I'm paying attention today because the way this box is gonna go, all my little ornaments should be going up and down like this because these outside edges are the top of our box. Now, I'm not gonna put anything on the bottom just because I don't really see a need to. So my sides are done, the inside is done. This guy is ready for a lid. Well, let's so make it. now that. it's time to make the lid for the box. Now, this piece is seven and five eighths by seven and five eighths, and we're gonna score it at one and three quarters on all four sides. To me, it's just easier to do it this way than to try to get both measurements because it's not like an even number. So one and three quarters, so just score a side, flip it and turn. Super easy, you'll get that done super quick. All right, 
this lid is a tiny bit larger than the box itself to give it a little ease to help it, you know, to go on easy, but also be nice and snug when it's closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut away the score line on the long flap of two sides. Just watch what I'm doing. That sounded crazy, but watch this because <laughs> that'll be confusing. All right. So then I'm going to take my little angle pieces out like I always do to get that bulk out of there. Okay. Long flap. I'm going to cut the score line away. So I'm cutting to the inside of the score line, closest to this flap, up to my first score line where it crosses over, and then take that little piece out to get rid of some bulk. Something like that, okay? Other side, opposite of it. I'm gonna cut the score line away. Cut carefully here because this edge is gonna show, um, you know, on the side of the box. It's not gonna get tucked in or anything. And then this side. Doing these little angle cuts give you some room to make some adjustments and it keeps some of the bulk out and that is a good thing. All right, now we can fold all our score lines. I like to cut before I fold, but you can fold before you cut. It's totally up to you. How unusual is this coral combination? I like the coral and the navy and the gold foil on this paper, um, in this paper pack, because I think it's cool to give it a different slant than just red and green for Christmas. When you're folding these flaps, because we took that little edge out, you need to be careful of one thing. If you're not careful, you'll fold it and get a little crooked fold. So when you're folding, just line your straight edge up to one side and then crease. And don't worry about that piece down there. It can get you a little crooked if you don't watch that. So line your little straight edges up. All right, we are ready to glue this guy together. So glue on your flaps. You can totally use sticky tape. You really could use sticky tape throughout any of this. I just happen to love my art glitter glue. I think it works well. So that's what I'm using. So there's one flap done. Let's do this one. And I'm just gluing those sides together, just like a box, like a, you know, you've probably made lids before, like a box top. And cutting that little angle, when I'm doing this part, when I'm lining this edge up, by having that little angle piece, I'm not getting any resistance from this piece because I've given myself a little bit of ease with that little angle snip. Sometimes people don't understand why I do that, so I hope that explained it. If I didn't do that, then I would get some resistance here because the paper would only go down so far. But the way I did it, I can kind of maneuver it. All right, so there's our box lid. Now I cut some more of that coordinating paper to go on it. I'm gonna put this piece on top here, just like so. I love this color combination. I've never thought about this for a holiday or a Christmas combination, but this coral and this navy in this paper pack is so pretty. Also, and I pulled some more of that navy out. These are that, um, this is that paper in the pack that comes with the little strips, like the little cut apart papers. I cut this apart and cut it the exact height I needed for here, which was an inch and a half. And this is gonna go around the edge of my box lid. I think this will be kind of cool, like kind of finishing looking. Again, all measurements and all supplies used, I will have linked in my blog post that will be below. We like to link it to a blog post because then we can always get everything in one place and you don't have to find my video and come back to it and open up the description box and all that good stuff later. The blog post will have this video in it. It will have all the measurements, all the supplies used and links. So it'll make it super easy for you. Our box right here. What I like to do when I close these up is I pick up three sides. Now one thing you'll notice is Two of your little waterfalls kind of act as a stopper for this side. They kind of stop it that way. I like to leave one laying flat and stick it into the lid top and then use that to pick it up to close the whole box together. So here's the little box. I'm gonna do one more thing to make it look like a little present, but I wanna tell you something. You're probably gonna notice that this lid is gonna rest on the waterfall pull tab. The pull tab should hang above your um, flap can you see this on the side, how the pull tab comes up? And that is perfectly fine. So your lid is gonna rest on those and that's okay. That's also why I made the lid the length I did so it can cover that little edge, which actually we don't even see now behind all the decorator paper. All right, let's make the bow for the top. Now, if you watched my video the other day, we made a bow and we made it look like Rudolph, which I thought was super cute. And then I thought, you know, I'm gonna make a bow to match my box 
And that's super cool, right? We can make everything so um, custom. So what I've done is I've cut myself three strips of three and a quarter um, by 12 cardstock. These are three and a quarter by 11, and there's three of those. This is two three and a quarter by 10s, and then one one inch by four. And I'll put these measurements on the blog for you. All right, so the first thing I need to do, we're gonna make this in like an S shape. If you remember the other day when we made it, what we do is we take, what I did, is I take this strip and fold it in half just so I can find the center, okay? Then I'm gonna take this edge and I'm going to fold it kind of back on itself. Do you see how I took the bottom of the, of the strip and I'm gonna put the bottom of the strip onto the center like that. And that gives me this kind of curve at the top. And as a matter of fact, Someone in the video the other day said, you're curving, you're doing it like an awareness ribbon. And I didn't think of that, but that is a good example. We're curving this so that it looks kind of like an awareness ribbon on one end, right? All right, so I'm gonna do that on both sides. Now, the thing is, I am going to um, brad this together in the middle. So I'm not gonna worry about um, stapling it in the center because I'm gonna run a brad through all these pieces in just a few minutes. So I'm just gonna get these guys kind of tacked into place until I put the brad on. So there is my first one, and that's the bigger one, okay? So that's the three quarter by 12. I'm gonna sit that over there and let it dry while I do the rest of them. Same way, fold it in half and get the center. You don't really have to do this. I just kind of like to have an eyeball for where the center is and put some glue on. The bottom of the flap is going to go onto that glue, and that's what gives you that curve here at the bottom. You think you wanna go like this, but you don't. That makes a loop. We're trying to make like a curved loop. I think it's just easier to explain it that way. Bottom of this flap, curve it around, and get it to that glue. I'm gonna go ahead and do this with all of my pieces, and then we'll put the bow together. I got all of my loops done. These are my 12, my 11, and my 10s. Now I'm gonna take the piece that I made for the middle. I'm just gonna do a little curve on it to make it have a nice bend. And then I'm gonna glue it together here in the back. And this is just gonna be the piece that sits in the middle. And I did cut it a little wider than my other strips because I thought it might fill in the space a little better. But as you play around, you might want yours to be the same three quarters of an inch. I just thought this would be a nice good filler for the middle to be a little tiny bit wider. All right, now we can assemble. I'm gonna use my crop it out and I'm gonna use the bigger hole here on this side. And in the middle of all of these guys, I'm gonna punch a hole. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna line them up and see if I can punch like three of them at a time, because I think I can. So just run this guy into the center. You don't have to use this crop at all. You can punch them with just a regular hole punch, just one at a time. But see, I got a hole through there, so those, there's those three. Now let's do these. You wanna try to center them. They don't have to be perfect by no means. There is a little bit of forgiveness for this. As long as you get the hole all the way through, you'll be fine. Then let's do these two. I'm gonna do these separate because just two of them might cross over kind of funny. So now let's put this guy together. We're gonna to start with the bottom layer, the largest layer, and line those holes up together, just like so. Try to hold those so it's you know so you can get through there easy. Then these guys are gonna alternate. See how I've got this gap? I'm gonna put this in between that gap, just like so. I'm not gluing them together. I'm gonna let the brad hold them. Then I'm gonna put this one in another gap of loops. If you feel like you're losing the center, if your holes are getting off, just take your pokey tool, pokey tool and stick in there and kind of bring them back together. Then I'm gonna put this guy over there. Try to get my hand over it. And then our two small ones, this one, these are cute, and this one. All right, and then this, I can now brad together. I'm gonna stick my pokey tool through there again and get that all lined up. Now that you've got them all together, take your brad and put it through the middle like this, and then close it down in the back. To me, this makes it easier, and plus, you can adjust this because it's on the brad. You can spin them where you need it to go. See how cute that is? Then this guy is going to hide all the workings. And see how making it slightly bigger really helps to hide that? Now, I decided to use sticky tape for this because I think it holds really well, and I will know that there is adhesive everywhere along this little strip. So I'm gonna put this onto the back of the um, little bow piece, and then I'm gonna come right inside of here and stick that down really well. And for me, that sticky tape will hold really well because I can press in there and get it all around that brad. But you could use hot glue. You could probably use art glitter glue, but I think the sticky tape in that instance works better. Look at that cute bow for the top of our box. Oh, and on the back, I'm gonna use more sticky tape, but I'm gonna use the wider version. 
and put some of this onto the back because I want to be sure this guy sticks. All right, let me bring the box lid back over. This is going to be adorable, by the way. Here's our lid, and I'm going to peel this little protective piece off. Just like so. And then I'm going to center this on top and stick it down. I'll put my hand behind it so I can press that tape into it so I know it'll stick really well. Look how cute that is on that lid. Isn't that adorable? And having a custom color bow to go on the top of your box. Now let me show you what I'm gonna do next. I cut these little pieces to go in the middle of that little pull up photo spot that I have. And they are just a quarter of an inch smaller. I'll be sure to give you the measurements. And I'm gonna use my stamp set called Action and this image here that says Place Photo here. And I'm gonna run through and stamp all these guys. Now I would, if I were giving this as a gift to someone, especially who does not know how to use one of these little photo holding keepsakes like this, I would put one of these um, on every place they should put a photo, but I really do think I'm gonna use this one for me. So um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much, but I wanted to show you how to do this. And this stamp comes in so handy because you can use it all over the place. Another thing you might consider, and I thought about this too, if I'm giving this as a gift to someone who might not know how to use it, you could do this little place photo here on sticky notes and then stick it into the book so they could see where they go. And that would be really cool. I wanted to show you what I was talking about. This is a sticky note I cut in half and I'm gonna stamp place photo here on it, just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's not gonna be mounted you know, permanently to the book. And then let's say you wanted them to know that this is a photo spot. You could just put this down here and then put one over here all the way through the book. And then when they get it, they just peel this off and put their little uh, photo there. I think that's another great way to show people how to use the book. Okay, let's glue these guys in. They're gonna go here. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the back of this little card and I'm gonna glue it in. I think I'm gonna go in this direction you can pick which direction you want it to go. Then when you give this to the person, they'll know, oh, I just cut a photo and put it here. You can even give them the dimensions if you wanted to, to let them know, place a, a three and a half by three and a half inch photo here or what have you. It doesn't matter because you can place any size photo you want to or wherever you want to throughout the book. But I thought that would be cute too. Then on the inside here, I'm just gonna place one straight down just like so. And you might decide you wanna put another piece of decorator paper behind this so it doesn't end like that. That doesn't really bother me. I think it's kinda of cute and it adds kinda of some like uh, structure to it or it gives it a little bit of movement. So I'm gonna put these on both sides of this piece, by the way, because remember I was trying to make a lot of real estate for photos because I think at Christmas is probably the time of year we snap, you know, the most photos unless it's a family vacation. So I've done one side and now I'm just gonna flip over and do the other. So once I had all of those in there, it makes this a lot heavier and it lays down really well. But look how many photos I can get in here. It's super cute. All right, let's put the lid on and look at it all completed. Now, if I were given this as a gift, so again, to close it, I would pull up two sides like so, let this third side kind of be my anchor piece, pick this one up with the box lid like so, to kind of be another hand for me hold everything into place and then slip that around. And remember, it's gonna sit on top of your little tab pieces, so that's perfectly fine. And look how cute that is, oh my gosh, what a cute little gift. There you go, that's my idea. Now, if you're giving this as a gift, I suggest that you give the sticker sheet that comes with your uh, paper pack with it. Because that way, whenever they're putting in their photos and stuff, they can use this to decorate the photos and things like that that go all around. The sticker sheet, and you might even consider some of the cut aparts, maybe go ahead and cut them and give them to them as, a, as part of the gift. But if you're doing this for yourself, definitely use these to decorate. Again, I'm gonna leave some links below to the graduation box we did so you can see a way that Amanda decorated her explosion box. And I just love this. So it explodes, these guys lift up, these guys pull out like waterfall all the way around and I love it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do and I'm probably going to just keep this one for myself because I think it's super cute. <laughs> Should I feel guilty about that? I hope not because I really do like it. All right, so lid back on. 
And there you go, guys. Be sure to check out the blog post below for any of the measurements and things like that that you might be interested in. And if you make one of these, guys, I really do want to see it. So share it with us over on our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. Or come to our customer gallery on our website at maymaymadeit.com. Click on More, and you'll see the customer gallery. You'll be able to see what everybody's been making. We have thousands, I believe, by now pictures. You wouldn't believe how many, how much inspiration is there for you guys. And add your photos so we can see what you're making too. Thanks so much for watching. And that is another gift idea down for 2017. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.